Hey everyone, this is Ella Thera with an instructional video that's going to take you through how to make your very own 3D paper art shadow box. Before we begin, there's a couple different things that you need to have on hand so we can do this craft together. First of all, you're going to need some glue. So any kind of glue will work. I choose to use school glue. Um, it seems to do the job for me. The only thing I would recommend is to stay away from what's labeled as a craft glue, um, specifically ones for scrapbooking, as they tend not to stick as well. You're also going to need something to spread your glue with and a container to keep it in. I have a little plastic tray that I've been using and the plastic tray is just something that was left over from something I bought. Um, so I keep my glue inside this so it doesn't make a mess anywhere. And then to spread it, I have two different tools that I use. One is just a toothpick. Um, the toothpick is used for finer details and it works well for smoothing in small areas. If you want to use something that's a little bit bigger, you can use just like a strip of cardboard like this. Um, it's a lot wider than the toothpick, so you're gonna be able to cover more area as you spread your glue. Um, also, you may find it helpful to have a pair of scissors on hand in case there's any little snips or things that you need to put on your design. Um, and last but not least, you may find, if you're having difficulty working with some of the smaller pieces, to try using a pair of needle nose tweezers to help you pick them up and place them where you want them. So let's go ahead and get started. By the time you're done, you're gonna have something that looks like this. So let's first start by taking all the materials out of our package. There's a lot of little tiny pieces inside. So make sure that um, you don't lose anything as you're taking them out. If you have any trouble getting the background out of your bag, you can always fold it or twist it like I'm doing right now and then it'll slide right out. But let's set our background aside for now and we'll go over all the pieces that we have on our kit and where they're going to go. So we have pieces of the apple. There's four of them. We have the large apple itself. We have this little additional piece um, that we're going to make pop out and it's going to look like the apple is shiny or that the light is catching it on one side. We have the stem and a leaf. And right now we're just showing the placement of everything. Once we get the placement shown, then we'll put everything together. The rest of the pieces are then for Flutterbat herself. So there's a lot of yellow pieces and a lot of pink pieces. Let's start with Fluttershy's main body. We then take this smaller piece that has a few edges that jut out at the end. This piece will go under her ear. We basically want to make it look like her ear is not just two-dimensional, three-dimensional. So we essentially have layered the two pieces of her ear. We also have another tiny piece, and that serves as her other ear. It's going to go behind her head, approximately halfway between the left and right sides. She has one leg reaching out towards the apple. That's the piece I have in my hand right now. That will go behind her body and will be reaching out. A 
Thus, for the rest of the pieces, the four on the left side are for her wing in the front. The remaining piece is for her back wing. So I'm going to set aside the back wing for now so we can show what the rest of the front wing will look like. Let's start by taking the largest piece. You'll notice that along the one curve there is a little triangular piece that pokes out. That is going to line up with the piece of Fluttershy's body that is sticking out. So where the little triangle comes out of the wing, you want to line that up with the rest of her body by placing it under that. We then have a smaller wing, so the next biggest piece. And if you line up the shape of it with the piece we just put down, you'll notice that it would slide nicely on top of the piece we just placed. We then have a third layer, so this elliptical shape, that will go on the very bottom. So we've created a layered effect where we have the largest piece is the base of her wing, then the medium piece layered directly on top of that, and the smallest piece layered directly on top of that. The final component is this really skinny shape, and that is going to connect from the end of her body in the top right with the tip of her wing. Last but not least, we have her remaining wing. That will go behind her body and her other wing, because it is furthest in the background. As for Fluttershy's hair, let's start with her tail. Her tail is made up of three pieces. So the three pieces in the bottom left make up her tail. The largest piece should be flipped the way I have it positioned right now, where you have the little tiny end of her tail sticking out towards the right. The next piece we layer on top is the medium size, and it's going to line up with the top left edge and then connect with the bottom left edge. The very last piece is super teeny tiny and looks like a little fish hook. We want to line it up so that the point on the hook matches with the point on her tail. Once we have all of that in position, it will go behind Fluttershy's body, and it's going to be angled 
the way that I've now turned it. So it's almost like the fish hook piece will be pointing directly down. And it will go behind her body and behind her legs. The front part of Fluttershy's mane is made up of several pieces as well. It has two pieces. The first one, the background, is the bigger of the two, and it has two hooks at the end. The second piece has hooks towards the top. And it's going to fit one on top of the other so that the bottom of the top piece rests and the, um, the point here rest on top of one another. top piece will go in front of her head, the bottom piece will go behind her head. Now this is a lot of information we're walking through right now, but it'll all make sense when we get to putting her completely together. Because we have so many tiny pieces we're working with, you may find it easier to use some tweezers to help hold things in place. For the last two pieces of her mane, we're gonna position the large one so that the top piece goes behind her head and will curve around behind her ear. So the top goes behind her head, the front, or the bottom goes in front of her head. And there's a little tiny um, other piece and that is going to go on top of her mane. So let's go ahead and get started with putting the pieces together. We're gonna tackle the apple first as it's easier and more straightforward. What I want us to do is attach the leaf to the stem. So go ahead and take your toothpick and your glue, put a little dab on the end, and put a little bit of glue at the edge of your leaf. And stick it onto your stem. Doesn't matter if you want to place the leaf behind or in front of your stem or where you place it or if it's on the left or right side. We just want this to look like an apple. Then we're going to attach the stem to the apple. So you want to take your toothpick, a little bit of glue again, put a dab on the very bottom of the stem. and stick it on the top in the center. If you have any excess glue, you can wipe it away with your finger. While we're waiting for that to dry, let's take the little tiny piece of our apple in the lighter red, and we're going to make this piece look more 3D. So let's take our fingers and pinch along the edges. So I'm just going piece by piece here, gently bending it around the edges with my fingers.
Let's then take our foam adhesives and we're going to use it to add some space between the big part of the apple and the little shiny piece. I find that if you bend the adhesive material and then get your fingers in there and pinch it and pull it out, that it helps to pull the adhesives out more easily. So right now I have one of them. It's sticky on the side that I pulled out, but not sticky on the top. We've only taken the backing off of one side. Let's go ahead and put that on the back side of our shiny piece. And press and hold it in place for a few seconds. This ensures that the adhesive is going to stick to the paper. Then we can peel off the backing. So now it's sticky. And let's place it on the left side of our apple. Once again, press and fir hold firmly for a few seconds. So now you can see that it pops out from the rest of the apple and because we've curved the edges down, it's making it look more rounded. We want to go ahead and do the same thing to the large piece of apple. So let's go ahead and do the same process, so pinching along the edges the whole way around. Because it's a bigger piece, we can pinch more of it at one time. We pinched very tinyly, a very tiny section on the small piece. We can bend a larger portion of the big piece. If you feel like it's not bending enough, feel free to go over the same section multiple times. As a finishing touch, we can add a little bit of wave to our leaf. Right now our leaf is flat. Why don't we go ahead and curve it towards us and then away from us. So curve part of it towards us on the left side and away from us on the right side. And then we're done with the apple for now. So let's go ahead and set that aside. Now we're ready to start tackling Fluttershy. I'm gonna move all the pieces that we were working with before, just so we have a clear workspace here. Let's start by gluing her ear piece. So we just want to take a dab of glue and put it on the very bottom. And then stick it underneath behind her head. And just line up the shape and the contours between her body and the smaller piece of her ear. Then we're going to take her hair, 
So this is part of her mane. This is the part that's going to wrap behind her ear and be in front of her body. You'll notice that there's almost a 90 degree angle, 90 degree turn on this piece of her mane. That is where it's going to fit behind her head and go around her ear. You'll notice that there's a little slit on the top part of her ear. This is where we're going to slide her mane behind her ear and lock it in place. Let's take her ear and gently bend it forward a little bit first. It's gonna make it easier for us to get her mane underneath. Then what we're going to do is position the mane behind her ear. And then we're going to take our glue and glue it where the top part of her mane meets her head. And we can also glue it where her mane touches her ear. We're going to need to wait a few minutes for that piece to dry. In the meantime, we can go ahead and get started on parts of her wing. So we talked about how her wing has multiple layers to it. We had the large piece in the back, then the medium piece, and then the small piece. What we're going to do is layer them on top of one another. And we're going to put spacers in between each layer. So our first step is to put a layer between the big piece and the medium piece. So let's take our foam adhesives and let's use two of them. And we're going to place them apart from one another and press and hold them in place for a little bit. Then peel off the backing. Position the medium piece so that it lies on top of the big piece. We're going to do the same thing again with the small piece. So we want the curve of the small piece to line up such that the tip in the bottom right matches the tip of our smallest piece. So what you'll find is a little bit is going to hang off the edge in the bottom left. So go ahead and take another adhesive. And we're gonna place it in the center of our tiny piece. Press and hold in place for a few seconds. Peel off the backing. And then position it in place. Now 
Now we're ready to attach Fluttershy's wing to her body. As we showed before, the little triangular end of the largest portion of her wing is going to go under the funny looking end of her body. We want to position it so that the small wing, the smallest piece of the three that make up her wing, is going to go on top of her body. And in order to join her body to her wing, we're going to use a small piece of our adhesive and place it right where I'm showing with my toothpick. Now these pieces are too big on their own, so what we need to do is cut one to the right size. So I'm just going to cut a rectangular portion. And that's what we will use. Once you have your small foam adhesive, go ahead and take Fluttershy. Put it on the back side, right towards the edge. Peel off the backing. Position it so that the smallest piece of the wing goes over the top and that the little triangle on the big wing matches with the end of her body. And then press and hold firmly. Next, we're going to take the thin long piece and we're going to glue the top right side where it meets the shape of her wing on the very tip. And then we're going to glue the bottom left side where it attaches to the rest of her body. So we're going to glue here and here. You may find it easiest to just do one side at a time. So I am gluing the top right piece first. Once that's dried, we can go ahead and glue the bottom left. And we can set that aside for now and give it some time to dry. So let's start working on the parts of her tail. If you remember, there's three pieces to her tail. There's the fish hook, and then two larger pieces. We're going to use half of one adhesive. So we're going to cut it in half to make it smaller and attach the medium piece to the large piece. So go ahead and take your scissors and cut one of your adhesives in half. Use your half dot and place it in the top of the largest part of her tail and press and hold firmly. Take the other half and place it along the top left edge. 
not quite at the very leftmost section of the edge, a little further away from that. And then press and hold it in place. We're using these to help space the two layers of her tail. Then take off the foam backing. And place the medium piece on top of the large piece. Press down for a few seconds. And then you can let go. Our little fish hook shape is going to have a super tiny piece of foam. So go ahead and cut a tiny thin rectangle. And place that approximately in the middle of where your fish hook is going to be. Once you have it positioned, go ahead and take the small fish hook and put it on top of her main tail. We're done with her tail for now, so let's go ahead and set that aside. By now, Fluttershy's body should be fairly dry. And we can start working on putting the other pieces of her mane together. The largest piece is going to go behind her head. And we're going to use foam to space it away from the rest. It's going to be positioned approximately like I have it now. So let's take one piece of foam and put it in the top left. Position it behind her head. And press and hold in place for a few seconds. We're then going to put the top half to her head. You want to line it up so that this triangular portion about halfway down lines up with that edge. liking where I have her mane. I actually want to bring it out a little bit more. Let's see how that looks and feels. That feels more natural actually. Okay, so we're going to move where the left portion of her mane is 
more to the left side. We didn't have it over to the left far enough. Show change of strategy. Let's position the two pieces of her mane, or the two layers of her mane relative to one another first, and then we'll attach it to her head. So, I'm gonna peel off my old adhesive that we don't need. Let's cut one of our foam dots in half and we're going to position the two pieces stacked on top of one another so that it's right above the little triangular jutting out. So right where I have my toothpick. That is where we're going to put two pieces stacked on top of each other. So go ahead and cut one of your dots in half Take both halves and squish them together. So this is gonna make it two layers thick and make it so that the two pieces pop out more from one another. Go ahead and apply it. Press and hold in place for a few moments. Peel off the backing and then position a smaller piece on top of the larger one. You can see that it stands out quite a bit having two dots as opposed to one. Now we're ready to put this on Fluttershy's body. We're going to use another adhesive to attach the top right portion of her mane to the top of her head. So let's go ahead and take one adhesive and put it right where my toothpick is. Now we're ready to put everything together. So we have Fluttershy and we have our apple. Let's start by putting the apple on the background. The apple's going to go on the left side. It's not gonna be quite touching, but we want it towards the left so that the end of it is about in the middle. We're going to take four dots, stacked all on top of each other, and place them towards the top. Then we're going to take two dots, stacked on top of each other, and place them towards the bottom. This is going to make it so that the top of the apple sticks out further than the bottom, and it's going to create more of the illusion that this is a rounded object and not just a flat object. So go ahead and stack four dots together and then stack two dots together.
I have a stack of four. And then a stack of two. Flipping my apple over, putting the stack of four towards the top, and the stack of two towards the bottom. Then I'm peeling off the backing. And positioning it on the left side of my background. Now that we have it in place, you can see that the bottom is a lot closer to the background and the top is a lot closer to the foreground. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add Fluttershy. Fluttershy's body is going to appear over top of the apple. There's going to be some overlap. We're going to place dots behind her wing to hold her in place. We're going to place them behind her back wing. I want us to stack two on top of each other behind her back wing. We can also put a few behind her tail. Let's go ahead and stack three of them on top of each other behind her tail. Once you have them in position, go ahead and peel off the backing. And then place Fluttershy on the right side of the box. You want to make sure when you position her that you're leaving a little bit of room on the edge on the right. Otherwise, you're going to have the lip on your frame interfere with the wings. So I've actually chosen to angle her a bit more so that her wings are basically in the top right section of the box. So now she doesn't overlap as much with the apple. And there you have it. You've now completed your shadow box.